How's it going, everyone? We are live. So my name is Aria Black, and welcome to episode two of Let's Talk. So the short form interview show with CG creators and other comic book creators. Right. So real quick before we get started with our interview today, let me just share my screen with you and remind you all that the Adventures of Taylor in Outer Space has landed on Indiegogo. So you can head over now. The link to this description. The link, the link is in the description to this Indiegogo sign-up page, as well as our guests' Indiegogo page. You can go down there, follow the follow the links, sign up today. When you sign up, you will be receiving free exclusive signed merch when you back the project. There we go. So without further ado, here's Ross. Hello, Ross. How are we doing? Hello. I'm doing fine. Thank you very much, Aria. Nice to be here. Oh, brilliant. Right. So you have just launched Chateau Obsidian number three. That's right. So you launched last night mm -hmm. at, uh, you said, 1 a.m., didn't you? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, approximately that time, yeah. So we're like 14 hours into the camp campaign then. Right. Mm -hmm. So first things yep. first, why, why don't you tell me bit about yourself, how you got started uh, in comic books, and then how you discovered Comicsgate. Okay, well, well, um, uh, I always remember reading comics when I was uh, when I was young. Started um, as uh, many people from the UK do, um, reading Beano, uh, progressing on to 2000 AD and uh, uh, Judge Dread magazine and all that, and uh, oh, yeah. uh, finally getting into. Uh, American comic books via uh, you know, comic, local comic book shops, and um, I've been reading them off and on all my life for well, forty years now. So um, I have always been the kid that was rather good at drawing at school. So uh, I uh, had a had a lot of talent for that, and and. Uh, have um, been kind of doing things like that on and off, uh, but decided to do comics uh, rather late at about uh, about ten years ago. Just um, thought I'd give it a try after not doing any drawing for years and uh, trying to be a writer. But I found that I decided to do comics, and I had an idea that I'd been I was working on as a writer. And I uh, thought, well, I'll just put the two together and, and uh, uh, make 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 my own comic. Right, good. So that turned yeah. out to be Shadow Obsidian. That was it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I originally made pages and pages of notes um, trying to write a novel a novel about it, but um, I was not, not that good at writing prose. So, uh, um, yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, couple of years ago found myself being being made redundant and thought well what the hell you know I've watched a few videos on uh, uh, on YouTube by uh, your boy Zach and uh, EBS oh, yeah. and everyone and I thought yeah yeah I, I'm quite happy to give that a go see what happens <laughs> yeah wicked that's actually mm. quite a good good origin story you know struggling through redundancy and then making your mm. triumphant return to comics that's yeah, wicked. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think we we probably had a, a bit of a bit of a similarity in our upbringing, like being the one in class that's good at drawing and all that. Mm -hmm. So, but you sound uh, pretty, you know, multi talented. Be, being able to write and draw, that's somewhat well, rare to find. I'm I'm not all that good at writing, I must say. But uh, I I I can't. I'm not very good at setting a scene. I'm better at drawing it. So so uh, uh, so I I. Found that comics are more suited to me that way. Oh yeah, that's the beauty of comics. Um, you know, mm. if you're struggling with the, with the um, struggling to set the scene, obviously yeah. use the visuals to compensate. Mm -hmm. it's perfect that's medium it. for it. Exactly, yeah. So, um, mm. oh, that's very good. So, how long ago was it you first came up with the idea for Shadow Obsidian? Well, um, the seeds were probably planted years and years ago when I when I. Uh, I I actually worked at um, uh, Butlins, um, and uh, it was part of my job was to 
dress up in a big bear costume and run around with the, a photographer and, and um, uh, take <laughs> pictures of all the people staying there, that was, which is great fun. And um, oh yeah, and and, and you'll, you'll find a little bit of that in in, in Chateau Obsidian. The character Jack, that's his job on the uh, on a cruise starship, and um, uh, as as I've uh, um, progressed in life, I've kind of added bits into it and uh, lots of lots of influences from from other jobs and with things that have happened to me and uh, just kind of set it on a starship and uh, thought yeah, yeah I, I can um, uh, write down the story finally so uh, it's been a long time coming and, and it's all kind of congealing now into a solid story well, good. Yeah, so mm. you've um, drawn quite a bit from your, your real life then for this book. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's um, interesting. Yeah, um, the, uh, I used to work for a wine company, uh, yeah. made all the wine, and uh, uh, got a bit of a taste for it. And uh, uh, again, that, that's uh, um, part of the story of Chateau Obsidian, set upon the ship's vineyards. Right. So, uh, Little little things like that. So so people that know me will, um, from different areas may may um, spot where I got certain ideas from <laughs> as they read it. Right. You've done mm. a bit of everything then, haven't you? You've dressed up as a bear, worked <laughs> this, there in a wine yeah. company, and now you're in comics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been a ride, it really has. Awesome. Mm. We got Bristolian Dave in the chat saying Shadow Obsidian looks great. Oh, and I would agree, the that. artwork on this book looks fantastic. We'll get onto that a bit more in just a bit because I want to have a specific talk about the artwork. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, when, when was the first Shadow Obsidian released? Uh, well, that was uh, the first campaign was on uh, Kickstarter, and that, that was pretty well, a few weeks off exactly two years ago I launched that one. Right. Um, and then the and second one, when was that up? Second one was, uh, I think, May last year when I started that oh, one. Yeah. Okay, so you've done, you've done the one a year for the past two years then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And obviously on, on episode three now. So yeah. uh, altogether, all how big is the story so far? How big is the story? Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's a sort of page count. Page count so far, um, uh, 20 eight page comics two uh, two of them i've got at the moment right. so um uh, yeah not not much over 50 something pages of uh story right now and what is i intend it for it to be six uh comic books but i think it's probably going to be a bigger issue this time because there's there's just uh a load to fit in really right really, lots, of story, of lots of stories characters, yeah yeah, yeah. Awesome. So by the end of it, are you planning mm -hmm. on maybe releasing a collected version? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, like I'll, one uh, one hardcover, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. That, yeah, that would, would be wicked. Uh, a decent size book then, if you can release that many issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Before um, uh, before I actually did the single issues, I did try an Indiegogo campaign um of yeah. for, for uh, with it as a graphic novel. Uh, but it didn't get anywhere. I didn't. I didn't. No. Um, I didn't build. I hadn't built up an audience. Uh, I hadn't uh, done put as much work into it, and uh, um, no, didn't get it. So uh, I've n chopped it up into six easy, manageable chapters, and uh, that's that's the way to go for me now. Oh well, good for you. It's going a lot better now, isn't mm -hmm. it? That's good. Mm -hmm. And for, yeah. for those of the of uh, you watching, make sure at ten o'clock tonight. Uh, Greenwich Mean Time. Ross is going to be on the CG UK Junior show as well because he's doing the rounds to help promote Shadow of City in number three, which is exactly what you want to do as a creator. Get on the YouTube rounds, start networking people to promote your book. So well done for that. Mm -hmm. Obviously an improvement on your first attempt. Right, so... Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what we'll do now. I'll share my screen and you can talk me through your campaign page. There we go. Would you like me to do anything here? Um, so no, just tell well, us a little bit about... Okay. 
So what Hello. are you going to say? Right, okay. Well, um, uh, nothing, nothing really, Edward. Um, uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, what you can see there is the uh, cliffhanger uh, double page spread from issue two, uh, where the uh, captain of the pirate ship uh, Mayflower and his uh, robot um, first officer are uh, have now come across in the ship a big church um, worshipping the uh, the green man which is um, the being the, the uh, kind of god figure that they are actually looking for within the ship to uh, uh, try and get him to stop the ship from a collision course with earth because wow. uh, it seems it seems like the uh, uh, this god figure is taking control of of the ship and is sending it hurtling through space to earth and the only way they have to uh, uh, to to alter that course is to look within the ship and find the green man okay so there's there's a element of religion to this story then do you want to, do you want yeah. to give us a bit of an yeah. overview of what the the entire Absolutely. story is about? Okay, well, it's uh, set on the starship Mayflower, and uh, it's a vast, huge starship, which in its first uh, incarnation is uh, um, a cruise ship. And on this cruise ship uh, work um, Jack and Sarah. Uh, uh, Sarah is the, uh, the redhead that, that you see there on the motorbike. Oh yeah, and uh, Jack is the uh, kind of holiday photographer that I was talking about. His his job is to take pictures of um, all the hol holiday makers on the cruise ship having a laugh. Right, and uh, when some of his pictures go missing, uh, you know, holographic data goes missing after he takes the wrong picture at the wrong time. Uh, he goes in search of it, and thusly uncovers a. Uh, uh, a conspiracy in in the ship uh, and uh, strange experiments going on in the vineyard. Wow! Yeah, all, and it all and it all goes wrong. Uh, all goes wrong. Later, later and then on, you yeah. have to save the day. I imagine. Yes, yes, yes. Something like that. Awesome. And you find, yeah, and um, on the same ship, centuries later, is where you find. Uh, the pirate captain because the ship is now a uh, pirate ship pirate spaceship and uh, they uh, are uncontrolled uh, are not in control of it after the green man apparently takes over over the ship and they have to go through the ship which has been uh, living on and on in um, centuries and centuries and they have to go through parts of it that the captain really hasn't seen um, in centuries, or nobody's seen in centuries, where where this uh, whole city and uh, culture has grown around the Green Man, and wow. what it all has to do with uh, the conspiracy that Jack and Sarah uncover is uh, the surprises that come along as the story progresses. Awesome. So this is this visual we're looking at on the screen. This is the spaceship. Yep. It's like a uh, like a floating city kind of. Uh, well, the the, uh, the sh within the ship is a is a great big globe, and right. it's, a, it's a spherical city, um, and this is this is a kind of a prelude to a big motorbike chase, which is going to happen towards the centre of it. Wow, very good. And mm. I'm interested to know more about this green man because I haven't read the books yet. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us a little bit about him? He seems like quite well, a cool um, figure in the story. The, yeah, now the Green Man, of course, is um, based on the uh, um, medieval uh, god of trees and woodlands and uh, uh, whatever. Right. And uh, he's existed on, on the ship for centuries, and uh, nobody really knows whether he's real or not. But... Um, it's the captain's job now to find him. Awesome. I, I yeah. like that. Interesting to merge <coughs> a religious aspect with the sci-fi aspect. Mm. I think that's really cool. I think the readers will enjoy that. We got Dave back in the chat saying, 
Cool, so 56 pages plus whatever number three turns out to be. Great value for money on your campaign. And yeah, yeah I think Dave's absolutely right because if we scroll down just a little bit, we can see your featured tier, <clears throat> catch a rubber tier. Yeah. You can get your hands on all three issues for only £13. That's crazy. That's This is probably the most affordable Comicscape project I've ever seen. It's amazing. <laughs> all that content for 13 pounds i think that's great yeah so wh where are you getting these books uh printed uh mix them mix them yeah yeah I think, I think most people are going through mix them so what yeah, the readers easy. are going to get yeah. then is proper high quality books aren't they mm -hmm. yep yeah absolutely and um, here they are all nice and glossy awesome show off for the viewers mm -hmm. <laughs> brilliant What's the uh, the interior paper like? That also gloss? no, um, no, I don't think it's gloss. No, it's it's uh, um, pretty normal. I'm not too much of a, a fan of uh, when the, when the internal pages are too shiny. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, pretty normal as comic book floppies go. But uh, um, yeah, I'm, everyone's really happy with, with how they turned out so far. Yeah, I'm. I'm never super picky about the interior pages. I like yeah. newsprint. I like high gloss. The only thing I don't like is when the ink rubs off on your fingers, like Marvel and DC is. Oh yeah, yeah pushing probably. out at the moment. You know, mm. garbage bucks. So mm -hmm. Let's scroll through a little bit. We see other <clears> tiers. You got your even more affordable digital edition. So that's great yeah. for anyone who wants to support the campaign on a budget that's a really good idea and mm. then you've got your standard issue three and we can see the yep. cover here for the book that's right that's awesome so who are these two yeah. characters on the cover okay we've got jack here on the uh, left yeah and um that's uh is it oh damn it I, I, uh, the name uh, just eluding me now so is it um <laughs> uh helena Helena, that's it. Helena. Of course. Yeah, right. And now these characters don't ever meet, really, because they're they're separated by the two uh, timelines. This this is purely an abstract um, cover, uh, just showing off kind of the progression of the similar weapons that they're using. Yeah. But um, yeah, they're they're, they're um, separated by centuries. But, but um, yeah, I just. Thought I it would look cool because the the, uh, the work the weapon that they have is is uh, the same and and uh, he's he's kind of the first one to use it um, and of course she's from the future so it's uh, she's got, has a slightly more updated version. What is this weapon? It's it kind of reminds me of the light swords from Halo, that sort of thing. Right, what, what right. I'm, I'm, yeah. Um, well. Uh, the one on the left is uh, a kind of repurposed uh, bit of technology used by the uh, um, uh, by the experiment going on in the vineyard to to manipulate the roots of the uh, actual vines. So, right. um, but it's been repurposed into a weapon by Jack in in a in a scene that will probably be in uh, issue six. So he uses it to physically fight these vines and that 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 kind of come to life so i don't want to ruin it too much but awesome. it's um yeah and uh, by the time it gets to helena's version they're actually kind of these crystals which uh she can manipulate and, and they grow larger and, and shrink and make different shapes and different weapons different different things so, yeah, oh, that's, that's, uh, that's, 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 that's um, uh, yeah, I thought uh, an idea that's been knocking around in my head for years and years and years, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I'm so looking forward to drawing um, battle scenes and things when, when, yeah. uh, um, when that happens. I, I like that idea. That's like um, what, the, what the Japanese did back in, back in war times when farmers would take sticks attached to each other those turned into nunchucks something like that 
Oh, it's yeah. that sort of theme, but sci-fi, so that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Real quick, we got Jacob S. He's just popping in because he doesn't want to Hello. spoil because he'll be hosting the show later with you. <laughs> All right, so, okay. Everyone, once again, head over to Jacobus's channel. That's in Belay. And you can watch the stream at 10 o'clock, Greenwich Mean Time. There we go. Right. Let's have another quick scroll. So you've also got this awesome variant cover, which you're also yep. offering on its own, as well as with three art prints. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, two art prints. and um, Two art prints, yeah. Sorry. Yes, yeah, that, 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 that shows us, um, I thought I'd play with the logo a bit to uh, um, see what else I can uh, do on the cover. And uh, that's Sarah, that's uh, Jack's girlfriend, um, who initially comes, on with, comes with him on the search for his missing data. And, um, but they're separated and there's a great... Um, like Chase in issue three, which I, I'm itching to draw and get stuck into. <laughs> awesome. So mm. by that, do you mean issue three is currently not finished? No, no, Artwork. no, it's not finished. It's uh, I have that that's uh, that double page spread of Sarah um, in the city is all the artwork that I have currently finished at the moment. Right. Uh, but but that's that's the way that I've been working so far is is to to get the campaign done and then uh, and then do all the work and uh, at the moment i have a the turnaround is annual so should be ready by october this year awesome thanks dave for dropping the link in the chat oh, so cheers, uh so the book will be ready by october yeah when do you reckon backers will have it in their hands uh, uh late october early november yeah not long after that. yeah no, that's good not long at all that's good so speaking about uh, your delivery, I remember mm -hmm. December last year seeing these yeah. tweets pop up on Twitter, obviously, of your books arriving in Christmas wrapping paper. Yes, yeah, yeah. I thought that was awesome, and you deserve a round of applause for that because that is exactly <laughs> how uh, independent comic creators should be treating their customers. I thought that was amazing. Well, uh, yeah. What, what well, gave you that idea? Months. Well, I was a couple months late, and I thought I was thinking of uh, stuff to uh, uh, just do something extra, just to say sorry. I know, I'm sorry it's late, and uh, it, it was getting on for Christmas time, and I thought, yeah, why not? I'll just wrap it up. It's a nice touch. So, uh, and, and it went down really well. So, I'm, I'm very pleased to have done that. Awesome. Yeah, that's something um, you'll never get out of regular mainstream comics and i always find it awesome when creators put that just little bit of extra uh work in personally it just gives it a, a really really cool vibe when you open it up then and yeah. at the time i was super jealous i was like how is everyone getting these books i'd missed uh, the campaign gone under my radar i was sort of new to comics gate then it gone under my radar i missed out on it but i'm really glad this one's up now because you have that catch-up tier which is mm -hmm. perfect for anyone like me who missed out on their chance to to get it before last year. Yep. All right. What else have we got here? You're off or offering both covers and the art prints. But do you want to tell us about these two tiers we have here, the drawn-in tiers? Mm hmm Go for it, my dude. Tell us what are these about. Okay. Uh, well, uh, you, you that's well that's uh, a walk-on role. Uh, in the in the actual comic, um, possibly in, a, in the background in a crowd, or or of uh, one of the main characters' friends, or uh, somebody who works on the ship, or just just someone who they, they come across once in the story, and uh, you can you can uh, get that for for uh, fifty pounds. And if you want the original line art with with you on, then uh, you can get that for seventy five pounds. That's awesome. This campaign as a whole is generally really affordable easy one to get into i'd really recommend someone picking up these tiers these look awesome especially because if you were to go to a, go to other ones they're going to charge you a lot for this this is an awesome easy way to get yourself into comics gate get yourself into the books i think this is these two are really awesome tiers especially this one where you get the artwork along with it i think that'd be awesome put it up on the wall it'll look great 
And what is this scene we have here? This is really cool. Okay, well, uh, that's when uh, Jack and Sarah get separated. They've um, Jack has gone off to uh, try and find the reason for his uh, uh, missing data, and uh, the only clue that he has is uh, uh, where the uh, CCTV and places in the ship um, was was deactivated uh, in certain places. So he goes to the start of this route. Just, just to find out what's going on, but and um, uh, but security are, are already aware of what he's doing, and uh, they've now now he's now he's arrested and given an hour to leave the ship. I think that's awesome, awesome piece of artwork and all. Right, real. Thanks. Uh, let's quickly check the chat. So thanks, Dave, for dropping these link, these links back. Shadow yeah. Obsidian today. There's the link. Uh, Here's the link to the stream later on where Ross is the special guest on the CG UK Junior Show. And then, of course, of course, I don't mind, Dave. You can show your own YouTube any day. And then Dave is also saying he's got he's planning on back in, but he's got to wait till payday. That's fair enough. And then Rob, yep. who's also going to be on the show later, saying, sup. <laughs> sup, Rob. Right. What else have we got in here? Oh, one more. Be in the story for two hundred and fifty pounds. What? What's this tier? That is, uh, you can actually be in the story. You can be a recurring character in in the uh, uh, remaining four issues. Wait. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you basically be uh, someone who comes back in every issue and have a part part to play in in the uh, finale in issue six. That is. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that idea. That's great. So that's something I would struggle to do with my book because most of them are animals in my story. So <laughs> I don't know yeah. how I would uh, how I would do that myself. I mean, there's some humans, but they tend to be the bad guys. So I don't know. I just look at this artwork. This is all so cool. There's that picture with the green man again, and this one from the yeah. start. I tell you what we we'll do. Oh, look at that one. That one is amazing. The that's the, that, that's the green man. That that's that's from that's from issue six when they finally do find him. So, so this is from um, this image is in issue six. That's right. Yes, yes. I've um you know to to sell the uh, uh, recurring character uh, perks. Uh, I've uh, included the uh, um, the double splash pages where they'll actually be featured. So, so um, those two people uh, in, in the uh, uh, the left of the picture there, people have already bought their place on that page. So um, they're going to be there. And the other one, which I think is above it, yeah, um, there's uh, yeah the the two people in the car. Uh, one of those people is uh, um, has purchased their place uh, in the previous campaign i did but so there's one remaining um one remaining space for anyone who wants to uh, purchase their their likeness as a recurring character oh wow that's awesome i like that i like that idea of getting drawn into the book a lot and you see the weapon on display here yeah so so you've actually drawn um you know pages from future books that's that's pretty mm -hmm. cool yeah that's pretty cool i don't see many people doing that that's that's an awesome idea. Let me scroll back to the top of this campaign really quick because I want to have a quick talk about the artwork in this book. This okay. picture, more than anything, caught my eye. Mm -hmm. uh, today, I was watching a video by your boy, Zach, where he was talking about the artwork of the new Iron Fist book. And okay. every angle where Iron Fist was shown was straight facing the camera or facing right, facing left. But they were all flat angles. Yeah. This, the quality of the artwork here is so superior to what you're getting out of the current mainstream comics. It's unbelievable. The, I would struggle to draw something like this because the, what you would get out of the mainstream is just a flat bird's eye view of this shot, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. This one, your bird's eye, but slightly off kilter, like 45 degrees off. That's got to be crazy difficult to draw. Something like this. <laughs> Took me this forever to do that. Yeah. 
and yeah, all the individual roles of people as well. Yeah, yeah. But what I would imagine you would get out of a lesser quality book is flat angles and like digitally duplicated uh, all these individual people here. They'd probably draw four or five and then copy mm -hmm. and paste. That's yeah, how I... Yeah. That's how I would do it if I was on a lazy campaign, right? Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't like spotting those things when, when, when you, uh, when you see digitally recreated yeah. people in crowds, and, and if you, if you spot a pattern, I, I really, really takes me out of it. So, so I, I decided to do all of those in, in uh, individually. That's awesome. And then the same here, you could have drawn this just straight behind her flat on looking over the city but this angle you've got with the road looking out over this uh futuristic looking city is awesome the the through line where your eye follows i think that's that's something really hard to do naturally there's quite a lot of thought gone into this i love it it's amazing artwork dude cheers man really appreciate congratulations that. you can see the the amount of effort you've put into this book i think it's brilliant Right. How long are we on for? We've gone half an hour into this stream so far. Let's check the the chat real quick. Rob suggests if I want to draw in characters to slap a pair of big furry ears on. <laughs> and he's worried about spoilers because he's going to be on the show later. So he also is asking, can you choose your own character name? You can. Yeah. 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 I mean, no, no, nobody yet has. Uh, um, uh, specified that they'd like to be called anything else than their own names so far, but that uh, um, the three characters I have recurring at the moment are all the actual people's names. Uh, yeah. But they, but but you can nominate somebody else or call them whatever. You, you know, it, it's uh, entirely up to to you. I'll I'll, I'll uh, discuss it with with the backers as and, as and when they they uh, um, contact me about it. Yeah, I think you we know, about their preferences. Last week on the CG UK Junior Show, we, we put it up to the audience to name the show. Mm -hmm. And we got some very, very not safe for work suggestions there. So I'm worried you could end up with some funny names here as well. <laughs> oh, well, I, within reason. I mean, I would yeah, probably draw, draw, draw the line at, at uh, um, anything you know risque or, or uh, um but but uh yeah but, right but, yeah how are you gonna stop exactly people from naming themselves bend over <laughs> etc i'd give them their money back i think if they ask that you know i'd, I'd say yeah, i'd really rather not you know but but we'll just have a discussion about it you know <laughs> i wouldn't um, do anything stupid you know and and yeah, uh, the people so far have been fine with their own names so uh, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah. yeah, as Dave says, some of the names were interesting for sure. Remember, guys, anyone watching now, you can still vote. It's all on Twitter. If you find me on Twitter, that's Aria Black on all socials. There we go. Put it on screen. Aria, I voted was for Bargain Bin. You voted for Bargain Bin? Yeah, I did. I am. Um, that was that was one of my suggestions as well. So, um. There's two polls up currently, you can still vote. I think Bargain Bin's the current leader right now. Mm. So we'll have to start calling it the junior show soon. <laughs> right, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're half an hour into the stream. So what I did last week on episode one was play a little game with Alex. So we'll do the same thing now. I've got a couple okay. images lined up. By game, I mean more, these are just visual prompts. So right. let me switch screens a second there we go so first off here's just my evidence i've backed the campaign i'm um, contributor number four i got the the catch-up tier which i would suggest for anyone who hasn't joined in on this campaign yet this is a great way to start uh, getting into this universe, getting into the story. Follow the link in the description now and back it today. Right, so let's get started. I'm just going to ask you some questions. 
Who is this yeah. character? That is Sarah. Um, Sarah. Her, her job is uh, security on the ship, and uh, what she's doing there is uh, piloting the uh, security drones that, uh, um, that, she, that she operates. Awesome. Right. So yeah. she's one of, the, one of the protagonists of the story then? That's right, yeah. She's uh, Jack's girlfriend, and, and uh, uh, with uh, Jack getting deeper into the conspiracy and being asked to leave the ship after um, people in her department uh, say that, that uh, he has to after he's um, getting too close to a secret. Uh, Right. She Did she you... uh, she she steps into gear uh, with the with his investigation and and uh, uh, tries to tries to find him again. So uh, that's that's uh, what she'll be doing in uh, issue three. Yeah. Awesome. Did, was there any real life inspiration for this character? No, not really. No, uh, uh, she's uh, um, entirely a, a kind of uh, fictional uh, character. I. Based her look off uh, a bit off of um, Rogue from the nineties with like the jacket right. and the, and the really tight clothes and and uh, um, oh, yeah, I, I see that. I see that. A good excuse to um, to get some TNA into the into the story, really, uh, just to, to make it make it look um, uh, visually appealing. Perhaps a fondness for redheads, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. What's what's this uh, eyewear she's wearing? Those are some funky glasses. Uh, well, well she's, she's, it's it's like a, a VR thing that, that she's using to control the security drones throughout the ship. Ah, uh, cool. Right. Yeah. So I found this one on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Number one, awesome looking uh, page. Is this a double page spread? It is. Yeah. Yeah. The like the motion and all the action here that is mm -hmm. wicked. But tell me. Who is this character? Okay, well, this is uh, the robot uh, first officer of the uh, Mayflower when it's a pirate ship uh, centuries in, into the, the future, further on from the other timeline. And uh, he's um, in, searching for the green man with, uh, with the captain, Captain uh, uh, Featherstone. And this scene is when they come across in their journey through the ship, uh, these um uh in an old lift shaft that's now filled with water there, there there's these um, hyper evolved eels uh that they come across uh, right because the ship's been left alone for centuries these these creatures have just gotten really big and uh he shows up and just slices the shit out of them he, he just uh, uh takes no prisoners <laughs> and and um the, the the captain's struggling with um, trying to drown them by blasting a hole through a drain, but but uh, he does so. Uh, but but the the robot uh, shows up. His name is uh, Bot Re Nineteen, and uh, he uh, just slices right through them with the with, with the extendable knives that he has built into his arms. Awesome. So he's a violent, violent character. Is this a good guy or a bad guy? He's it's good. He's good. Um, but uh, everyone's a bit a bit bad, really, uh, in, <laughs> in the story. There's, there's uh, um, the uh, on, only real baddies are the people who are trying to make this experiment work, and and uh, uh, but they, and they've got a good side as well. So 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 uh, people are right. up and down all the time, really, throughout the story. Conflicting motives, maybe. Something mm. like that. Yeah, yeah, like, you got it. Yeah, you sort of touched on this one. So these are giant eels, then, are they? Yeah, yeah, they just um, come across these uh, great big eels in the uh, middle of the ship, and and uh, have to have to get through them somehow. And and uh, the uh, uh, and it's the robot that saves the day. Kind of like how in Star Wars they find the monster in the um, garbage disposal. That sort of thing, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. That's awesome. So, how 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 come these are so big? Oh uh, well, they've just been left alone for centuries to evolve from um, uh, goldfish or whatever, you know. So, so uh, they're, they're just uh, with with the, with all the space uh, in the ship and a and a 
vast network of flooded lift shafts to live in. They've just got bigger and bigger and bigger. That is like my worst nightmare, giant sea serpents. <laughs> that's uh, that's terrifying for me. These are the, these look awesome. The way you've drawn the water on this is wicked as well, splashing out towards the reader. And this is your main character, yeah, in, in the front? Yes, that's Captain Featherstone there. That's, uh, he's, uh, um, yeah, captain to the uh, other one's first mate, the robot. Awesome. I can't wait to see more of these eels because despite them being absolutely terrifying to me, I think they were really cool as well. Right, I think we're on the last one now. Okay. Oh, Different uh -huh. kind of question. Yeah. If you could have any other... If you could have a crossover between Shadow Obsidian and any other comic skate book, what would that be? Oh, uh, good question. I think I'd like Maybe to have... Yeah, I think I'd like um, just for a challenge of drawing him. I think I think I'd have um, uh, Rainbow the Brute showing up in the background or something. <laughs> Rainbow the Brute. <laughs> yeah, that's a that could be interesting. A fancy character yeah. in your sci-fi spaceship. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, trying to figure out how to get him in the story will be a nightmare, but it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm gonna. I have to keep a tally of this. I, I've asked Alex, who was on episode one, this. His vote was Cyber Frog. Your vote <laughs> is Rainbow Boot. We're going to have oh, to yeah. find something that isn't all Captain yeah. Alex. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um... <laughs> but Rainbow's, Rainbow could work. That could be that could be interesting. Maybe, maybe you could uh, ride in on a unicorn or something. Yeah, yeah. Or a bike race between... Um, your character and Rainbow the Brute on a unicorn. <laughs> that's that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That'll be a laugh to draw. Yeah. I think that's wicked. We'll um, have to let Ethan know about that. We've got people who want to collab with him. Right. Let me take this off the screen. And before we end, do you want to uh, give the audience a little plug for all your socials? Where can they find yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on, on Twitter at Ross Banfield, and um, Facebook uh, as well. Shadow Obsidian's on Facebook. That's about it. Uh, find me on uh, Indiegogo with Shadow Obsidian number three. The links there. Awesome. Back it now. Indeed, back it now, guys. Let's catch up on the chat before we finish. Where are we? Right. Rob seems to be a bit confused about what I'm talking about. So what I was saying is Rob will be on the CG UK Junior show tonight at 10, along with Dave and Jacobus and all the regulars. And then he'll be on this show, Let's Talk, later on this week. Right. There we go. And Dave reckons we should be called Bristolian Dave and his cheerleaders. <laughs> Which I <laughs> I don't dislike that one. <laughs> but I think we'll go for bargain bin, something like that. Right, one last time, let me show you all Shadow Obsidian on Indiegogo. You find the link in the description. Make sure you back it. Back it today so we can give him a big boost on the first day. He's already done really well, raised 141 pounds. And then secondly, make sure while you're down in the description, you click the link to my page. The Adventures of Taylor in Outer Space is now on Indiegogo. Sign up, you will receive free exclusive signed merch i think i have something really cool in the pipeline for you all i'll update this page really soon so there we go all right i think we're done awesome rob's Great. got it so many shows so little time i think he's right so remember follow ross on all the social media back the book today and we'll see you all in the next episode of let's talk bye bye bye